morning, boys and girls. This is Miss Donna here, and we're still into bugs. Small creatures, big lessons. Today, boys and girls, we're going to hear from Skittles and see what's up. What's up? What's up, everybody? It's me. It's the SKI to the double T L A F. Skittles in the his head, and I'm ready to get busy telling you what's up. Today, we're talking about the caterpillar and the butterfly. It's a lesson about being transformed. So every time somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. Get off, off the, the floor, floor and, and learn, learn to soar. soar. Little caterpillars, they start out by crawling on the ground. They get all dirty and gross. Pee you, you little caterpillar. You need to go take a shower or something. You stink it. But then they get inside their little cocoon and God turns them into something amazing. A beautiful butterfly that can fly through the air. Okay, Mr. Butterfly, fly, be free. Ooh, yeah. You know, God created you to do great things. Sin, it tries to keep you crawling along the floor of life. But God wants to help you soar to new heights in Him by transforming you into a brand new person. Uh-oh. No, man, I don't mean a different body. I mean God changes you on the inside. He takes your sin and wipes it away. And then He helps you to think, act, and be totally different. It's a transformation that is awesome, baby. So anytime, I mean anytime, somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. Get, Get off the, the floor, floor and, and learn to soar. soar. And that is what's up. I got a rainbow flavor and I'm living for my savior. Skills is out, baby. So, boys and girls, what's up? Get off the floor and learn to soar. That's right. That's where we are today. We're going to get off the floor and learn to soar. We're not going to be like the caterpillar. We're going to be a butterfly. <laughs> My name is Mo, Mo Skeeto, and I've been working really hard on my new virtual reality video game called Splat. Last couple days, I've been fixing problems here and there, getting ready for the game to be released. One problem had to do with the bug containers. They were originally made out of glass. Gotta catch them all! Entire. Well, I sorted that out. I feel good about today's adventure. I even feel like today might be the day we find the bed bug. Mm -hmm. Yes, the bed bug. As you know, ever since I was a little kid, I've been obsessed with finding the bed bug. Where could they be? Mm -hmm. I've got an idea. Let's go to my room. The window, the nightstand, behind the mirror? Where could these bed bugs be? I still feel like there's one place I haven't looked. Oh well, today I've got to return some library books from when I was seven. The problem is I have a $482 fine on them, so someone please buy my game. But I have a good feeling about today. Wait! Achoo! Oof! Been holding that one in all day. Wait a second. I think I see something in there in the bushes. Could be some bugs. You know what that means. Gotta put on my goggles 
and gotta catch them all. Yeah, it's higher. I feel good about those tosses. Let's see what we got. Huh, a library book. Let's see whose it is. M. Skeeto. I hope he finds it so he can return his book. Let's see about this one. Water book. Nice, but I don't have time for this right now. Let's see what we have in this one. Oh, it looks like we might have caught something. Let me check my bug guy. Hmm, it's a pumplopod. No. Oh, this is a caterpillar. I was close. You know, caterpillars are awesome. They start off as these little guys walking around eating leaves on their bellies, and then all of a sudden, they turn into a butterfly. As Christians, we go through a transformation too, or a complete change. When we repent and ask Jesus into our lives, we're transformed. The old life is ended and the new one is born. The Bible says, when we ask Christ into our lives, we're completely transformed. The old life is ended and the new one's begun. Well, there's another example of a little bug teaching a big lesson. One last fact about the caterpillar, they say they taste exactly like peaches. I bet this little fuzzy guy's delicious. <laughs> <clears throat> no, no, I was wrong again. I may have gotten that fact wrong, Ugh. but I do know this. Today in your lesson, you're going to learn all about being transformed by Jesus. It's going to be amazing. Until next time, gotta catch them all! It is oh my goodness, boys and girls. Can you believe Mosquito eating the caterpillar? Ew! Well, today in our Bible story, it's found in Acts chapter 9, and it's 1 through 19. So if you have your Bibles, you can kind of read through that. Alrighty, we're going to learn about a soldier um, named Saul. Now, Saul thought he was doing the right thing. He was trying to get rid of all the Christ followers, the people who fell in love with Jesus. And then when Jesus died and rose again, they believed he was the son of God. And that's when they became Christians. Well, boys and girls, Saul thought that they were believing wrong. And so he tried to arrest every single Christian he could. And he even killed some of those Christians, boys and girls. And so God's word says, Saul was uttering threats with every breath, and he was eager to kill the Lord's followers. He wanted to get rid of everyone. And so he went to the high priest, and he requested letters to take to the synagogue so that he could arrest even more. Well, he had to go to Damascus. And so he got on his horse and on his way to Damascus, it says a light from heaven shone suddenly around him and he fell to the ground. He fell and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? <gasps> Who are you, Lord? Saul said. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Well, the guys that were with Saul, they were speechless. They had no clue what was going on. They didn't hear the voice, but they definitely saw the, the bright light. So boys and girls, Saul got up because he was going to go into the city. But when he got up, boys and girls, he was blind. He couldn't see anything. And so a couple of his friends helped him to go into the city. Well, boys and girls, when he was on his way to the city, God had told one of the Christ followers, whose name was Ananias, that Saul would be coming to him. And he told Ananias to go find him and lay hands on him 
so that Saul could be healed. God told Ananias that Saul was going to become one of the biggest preachers in the world. So boys and girls, Ananias went and he found Saul and he laid hands on him and God's word tells us that he was healed. Now, he could see boys and girls, but he also knew that God had done something miraculous in his heart. He was changed. And so he changed his name from Saul. He changed it to Paul. And he stopped sinning, making bad choices. And he stopped arresting the Christians and the followers of Christ. And he stopped killing them boys and girls. Instead, he began to preach and teach about Jesus all over the world, just like God said. Well, how could someone as bad as Saul change so much? Well, boys and girls, the, there's only one way something like that could happen, and that's the power of God transformation, changing from one way to another. Now, his whole face wasn't changed. It was his heart. Instead of him making choices on his own, he was following God. He asked God to be the boss of his life. And that's who was making choices with him. He followed. God changed Saul's life, boys and girls. Well, today we're going to look at 2 Corinthians 5, 17. In God's word, it says, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Boys and girls, this 2 Corinthians 5.17, that's the address, or that's where it's found in, a, in God's Word. You go to the book, 2 Corinthians, you go to chapter 5, and then you look up verse 17. Or, you can think of it as an address, 2 Corinthians is the town, chapter 5 is the street, and 17 is the house number. So we know that this verse is found in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Anyone, boys and girls, that means you, that means me, who belongs to Christ. How do we belong to Christ? We admit our sin, believe he died and rose again for us, and choose him to be the boss of our life. And then God's word tells us that we become a child of God, which means we belong to God the Son, Jesus Christ. It says anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Boys and girls, the old way of doing things is gone and the new way has begun. The old life is gone, the new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Oh, boys and girls, that's so exciting to know that. God, the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit wants you to be transformed. That's a big word, but what it means, boys and girls, is to go from the old way to the new way. To be changed in your heart. Boys and girls, Without Jesus, we can't do much of anything. You know, Skittles had said that without Jesus, we're like the caterpillar. We kind of are down and roaming around in our own dirt and muck and in sin because we don't know any other way. We make bad choices. We say bad things. We think bad thoughts. We do things that don't please God. But boys and girls, we try to do everything 
on our own, in our own strength. And we can't. We can't do anything without Jesus, anything of good. You know what, boys and girls? Jesus changes everything. Jesus can change us from a caterpillar to a butterfly. And that just means that this butterfly soars above the earth. He takes over and soars above all the problems. Boys and girls, with Jesus as the boss of your life, Jesus will help you be able to soar through your problems. It doesn't mean that everything's going to go away, but he can make it better because you're not alone. He is always with you. God's word says, the Lord is my helper. Jesus will never leave me. Boys and girls, Jesus changes everything, boys and girls. You see, the butterfly represents who we become once we allow Jesus Christ to come into our lives and change us from being people of sin into people of God. He forgives us. And um, he forgives us all the wrong things that we've thought, said, and done. And then there's a new life. Remember the verse, old life into new life. Jesus paid the price for our change, for our transformation. Boys and girls, if you admit that you have done things that didn't please God or said things or thought things that didn't please God, if you admit to God, yes, God, I've done those things. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I believe Jesus died on the cross and rose again for me. And I choose you, Jesus, to be the boss of my life. If you have done that, or if you do that, you will have become transformed, changed. The old life is gone and the new life has come. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for these boys and girls, and I thank you that we can go from a caterpillar to a butterfly. We can have an old life, but be changed to a new life. We can become, go from being sinful to follower of Christ, forgiven. Lord, I pray for these boys and girls this morning. I pray that you would help them to make the right choice. Help them, Lord, to be transformed. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, if you prayed and asked Jesus to be the boss of your life, I want you to go right now and tell mom and dad, or let Miss Donna know so I can be praying for you. I love you, boys and girls, and I can't wait to be with you next week. Have a great week and remember, Jesus loves you and he'll never leave you.